Hey everyone, welcome back to Try Hack Me's Advent of Cyber 2. I am Dark, and today we're going to be doing Day 15. Now, this is a redo of the video because it did not capture audio for whatever reason when I first did this, so you'll notice my day is complete. Um, that being said, I will not be pausing at the end before we go through the answers because my answer is already in there and I don't want to reset the entire room for myself. So just keep that in mind. Uh, that being said, let's go ahead and dive into Day 15. There's a Python in my stocking. So today is the first day in programming, and this was created by B. Uh, B is the head of the subreddit and one of the mods on the Discord at the time of writing. Uh, so that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump right in. This is going to teach the basics of programming that we need to dive into scripting our actions with hacking. All right, so... Have you ever wondered how the elves managed to keep up with building toys for so many people all around the world? Do you ever think or get sad and think, huh, with 7 billion people in the world and growing, that means each elf will be working nonstop to build toys. They'll never get a break. And with the elf whacker that we saw the previous days, yes, they will never get a, get a break. Uh, well, I have good news for you. Thanks to the magic of Santa, elves have machines that can build toys for them. This machine requires an elf to design a toy and then describe how to make a toy in a scripting language. This is the basic pattern that we're going to be following where we define a task and then we break it down into the well-defined steps that become our program. Scripting languages are special types of programming languages well suited for smaller, shorter programs such as the designs of a toy. This document is for any elves looking to work with Santa. Once you have completed this, you'll be able to easily manufacture toys and use Santa's APIs. So we're looking today at Python, which is a scripting language. This is typically, well, you can do a lot with Python. This is typically meant for doing quick things. So like if you have one task, like I, well, at the time of writing, uh, consoles are kind of hard to get for the newest generation, the uh, PS5 and the Xbox Series X or Series S. Um, so you could write a, t you could actually take Python and write a script that refreshes the web page checking to see if they're in stock. Simple tasks like that are very ideal for Python. It just works well for that. Uh, you can make web servers and other fun things in this. Python is super useful, and it's one of the best languages to know from the get-go, especially for InfoSec. What is Python? Python is an interpreted high-level general-purpose programming language. In short, Python is highly available on many computers already and is very easy to write. Python is available in all Linux operating systems, the TryHackMe attack box, Elven toy making machines, and Mac OS, but sadly not Windows by default, however you can install it on it pretty easily. Installing and tooling. So I'm going to glaze over this. This is something that it is already installed for you and I recommend using the attack box for today if you want to try playing around with it a little bit. It's nice to have a little editor that you can just test things out and see why things work each way that they do. Uh, so the big thing that you're going to want to know with this is you can install this with apt if you're using Kali in your own installation. However, Python 3 is installed by default nowadays. And then you can run programs using Python 3 and then the name of your file. Uh, keep in mind that you do need to use paths here. So make sure that you have that done accordingly with your Python command. And then the author here, B, recommends using VS Code. Uh, there's also PyCharm, which is free. It has a community edition. VS Code is wonderful as well. It's a pick your poison. What do you like to use the most? All right. Hello world. It is traditional for your first program to be hello world. So let's do it. Open a new file on VS Code or your text editor of choice and call it hello.py. The .py extension means it is a Python file. Now type print hello world. Save the file and then in a terminal navigate to where the file is and run Python 3 hello world or hello.py rather. You should see the output on your screen as hello world. Let's break down what each of these components mean and we'll explain what they do. So in this specific case, you can go ahead and run this by starting uh, just doing this in your uh, attack box if you want. In the case of this, since we're going to walk through everything, I won't demonstrate everything in the attack box for today. However, if something doesn't make sense, run it in the attack box with Python 3 and you'll see what happens. And it should be a little bit clearer with experimentation. So print. Print is a function. We will give it some text and it'll print to the screen. We'll, we'll see functions a lot in Python. They're essential as they allow us to reuse code. We don't want to reinvent the wheel every time that we want to use a different function because usually someone's already written something that we can either take and modify or just use from the, out of the gate. To define our own function, we'll use the def keyword for define. Def, hello, and then we see that the output of that function 
is Hello World, or print Hello World. We'll use a tab or four spaces right here inside functions to denote that the code belongs to that function. That is required by, I believe, the standard PEP8, which is the Python uh, styling guide uh, that you are required to have that to denote what is in uh, each function and it, your programming uh, interpreter, what you're actually coding in, like VS Code will get upset with you if you don't use those. And sometimes your program might just not work. This is called scope. And unfortunately, we won't go into it much here, but I'll link some resources at the end, which will. And there are some nice resources at the bottom, especially if you want to take your Python programming and go to the next level. Hello world is what we call a string, a string of characters. It's just text. All right, variables. Now in the last section, I said a string, a string of characters. What does that mean? In programming, we have to have data types. Pardon me. We have to have data types. Every bit of data has a type in common with it. You already know some. So if I give you a bunch of numbers, are these sentences? No, they're numbers. See, you already know data types. In Python, it's the same. We have some essential data types that hold things. And if this is all kind of clear as mud, just give it a little bit. This makes more sense in context with everything that we're going over. So once we actually get to doing demonstration program or some demonstrations, it'll make more sense. So first we have a string, which is a bunch of characters. We have integers, which are whole numbers. And note these can be negative. There are upper and lower bounds on what these can be. However, they're very, 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 very big. So you will never, ever hit them unless you're working on something that probably should redefine how it's using numbers. Float, which is a floating point number. Um, and that can have a decimal point and uh, a certain number of spaces. I think it might be eight uh, places after the decimal point. I know it's pretty long. Uh, don't quote me on that with it being eight. It's been a while since I've used floats heavily, but you here you can see some examples. List is just a list of items. It's similar to an array, but simpler. And more. So we have hello equals hello world. This is, we are setting the variable hello equals to this string. We use the equal sign as an assignment operator. It assigns the value on the right hand side to the bucket on the left. So the value right here is assigned to this bucket. Now let's say we wanted to add this variable to another variable. A common misconception is that we take the bucket itself, so hello here, and use that. But in Python, we don't. We pass by reference, not by value. As in, we merely pass a location of the variable. We do not pass the variable itself. The alternative is pass by value. This is very important to understand as it can cause a significant amount of headaches later on. This is very important in toy making. We once had a small bug where an elf assigned different variables to the same toy. We thought we had 800 versions of the, the toy as we had 800 variables, but it turns out they were all pointing to the same toy because we were just passing it by, by reference, making a bunch of copies of this one variable effectively. Luckily, those children managed to get toys that year. Operators. So these are pretty straightforward. And I'll go through this section pretty quickly. These are your math operators and you can see them just down here as examples. Now the couple that are going to stick out here are this is to the power of, which is two asterisks. So, and this is multiply with just one. And then we have the percent sign, which is mod. Uh, that I believe is just remainder. Um, this is something that you can dig into just a little bit more when you want to play around with. So just be aware of that. Or rather, I believe this is how many times it can go into it in a whole amount. It's, it's been a while since I've done this because I, you typically don't use mod that much. Now the cool thing, operators don't just work on numbers. They work on strings too and lists and dictionaries. So here you can see that we're concatenating two lists together and we make one bigger list. And then we're concatenating two strings together to make a bigger string. Boolean. These, uh, the two values for the data type Boolean are true and false. Much like Santa's list of naughty and nice, it is either true or false, never both. True or false are extremely valuable. In binary, one represents true and zero represents false. And here you can see where we're getting that from. A lot of things that you notice in programming and different ratios are coming from the fact that we store things in the binary representation just because it's very easy to represent something as either it's on or it's off. Through these two values, we can represent all data on a computer provided we are using logic gates. Those logic gates appear in Python as operators. We'll go through one you may already know. So we have the OR operator here. The OR operator returns true whether uh, when either the left or right side is true. So as long as one of these is true, it returns true. 
and then we'll talk about some of the other ones. So there are more than we're covering here, but these are the important ones to know for now. So we have the AND operator, which is only true if both sides are true. If even one of these is false, this returns false. We have NOT, which is just the opposite of whatever it's put in there. It's just a, it's an inverter, so to speak. And then we can use parentheses to take inversions of, uh, or perform operations on other uh, bits of what we want. Uh, it's just a case of uh, similar to PEMDAS in math. We can do these in a uh, the order that we specify there. So here you can see that we have true or false, which would be true, but we're taking the not of that, which inverts it into false. If statements. If statements are one of the most powerful statements in all of programming. We want to do something if a condition is met. If a child has been nice, they get a toy, else they get coal. So for example, if the list is not empty, so if x equals 6, and this will never be empty because we're not removing things from this, if x, so we're checking to see if it has anything in it, as long as it has something in it, it'll return true, it prints, I run. Because x is not empty, it has a truthy value, which means this reads as if true and it runs. It, if it reads as if false, it does not run. If statements only run if the condition is true. Now let's see it in action. So we have our name with the input function here. We can take user input using the input function. Now let's say we are a wide bouncer at Santa's Grotto. When we want to let people in that have a name on our special, or our uh, name at our special club, we need to create a list of names. Can you guess what we'll be using for this? So here we can see we have our names list here, and it looks like my name might be spelled just a little bit off. I can't even imagine where they would have gotten Dorkstar from, but who knows. Great, and now if we have a string such as Java, how can we check to see if the name is in the list? So we're going to do that check here, Java in names. And we can see that because it's not in here, it returns false. Now if we want to print a special little message, if and only if users inputted name uh, appears on our list, we can do that with this if statement. So if name and names, and then it prints the wide one has allowed you to come in. Now, what if it doesn't actually appear in this list? We can have an else condition, which is a little bit of a catch-all. Uh, you can do this for error, handle, or error handling as well, which is one of the big things that else conditions are, exist for. Um, they can be used for other things as well, but error handling is a nice idea of how to think about that. Print, the wise one has not allowed you to come in. So you can see that we have that catch-all for if you're not on the list, which is going to be the vast majority of people. Uh, since that's a short list, it's going to print that most of the time. And you can see that it's just kind of, it flows downward vertically in this specific way. It checks up here and then it moves on to the next one until it either finds something that is true or it hits an else statement that it always is just going to run. Um, as long as something else hasn't run above it. One line if statement. So we can take this and while well, this is a little bit different, uh, we can make this compact, which this is useful to know, not necessarily within this context, but when we're upgrading shells, we can use one line uh, Python commands to upgrade our shells uh, using PTY, that library specifically. So just something good to know uh, that you can compact these things. They don't always look the prettiest, but they will fit on one line of code. Loops. Loops allow us to perform the same code repeatedly. For loops are best described how they are read. So we have our names list and then for name, so each one of these items in names in this list, print that name. And it's going to go through down the line and it'll print them in order. Since that's exactly what we told it to do. For every name in the list of names, do something. In this case, print the name. For loops can iterate over the elements of any iterable. Let's look at a function which returns an iterable range. Range returns a list of numbers in a range. So to loop between 1 and 9, we would do range 1, 9. Range is inclusive, so 1 and 9 are included. Now to loop over this. For i in range 1 through 9, or 1, 9 rather, print i. So we're going to print 1 through 9 in order there. Note we often use the i as the variable for or in a for loop as it stands for item. I've also seen this covered as iterable, but item is typically the standard that we treat it as. Usually, if you're going to go through and do this, you should name it something a little bit more descriptive, so just be aware that i is just a nice placeholder with doing test code. Libraries. You've seen how to write one yourself, but what if we wanted to use other people's code? This is where using a library 
uh, where library means a bunch of someone else's code. We can install libraries on the command line using the command pip install x. And then one quick note, since we're using Python 3, there should be pip3 typically in this case, because pip3 denotes that we're installing something for Python 3. By default, this will install something for Python 2, if Python 2 is installed. Python 2 is considered deprecated. Uh, you will need to know it for things like buffer overflow eventually, but don't worry about that right now. That's a little, that's significantly beyond where we're at right now within advent of cyber. Uh, where X is the library we wish to install in this statement. So we pip install and for example, PyPy or beautiful soup for which we talk about down here. This installs the library uh, from which a database of libraries. So this is just a bunch of libraries that we can install. Let's install two popular libraries that we need. So we have the request library and then we have beautiful soup. One specific note, there shouldn't be a space here. It should be beautiful soup for without a space. Something very cool you can do with these two libraries, extract all links on a web page. And here we can see an example of how we can import specific things from that beautiful soup library. And we can import just the entire library. Uh, keep in mind, we have to have them installed to use them using uh, the pip statement. But once we have them installed, we can use these from and import statements to get specific bits that we want to use in our code. And we have an example of how to do that down below, just using that code. This was a very short introduction to Python, but here are some more links if you wanted to learn more. Uh, we have the Python Zero to Hero course. There is the Python Modulo operator in practice. And then we have Automate the Boring Stuff with Python. There is another book, I believe, from No Starch Press that has the same name. Definitely worth checking out. It's a lot of fun, and it's very cool to get into Python automating. As there's a lot you can do. And then we have a little bit we're going to use in task five. All right, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the challenges. Uh, if you don't want to see the answers right away, I recommend pausing here, so just be aware. All right. What is the output of true plus true? So because we are adding two like operators together, this is going to be two. What is the database for installing other people's libraries called? That is PyPy. You can find this just through some Google searching, uh, nothing too fancy. What is the output of bool false? That is going to be true. Uh, just because we are checking to see if something is actually there. Uh, this is a string, not the actual true or false value. What library uh, lets us download the HTML of a web page? We talked about that a little bit up above, the request library, and this is something you can find through searching a little bit for it as well. What is the output of the program in task five? Above the Christmas banner and below the links, uh, that is gonna be right here. Here we can see that this is an example of uh, passed by reference. This, uh, so we have X equals this list, one, two, three, and then we have Y equals X. Now keep in mind, this is like a bunch of guys in a line pointing at each other. You have a new guy that gets in line and he points at X and then X points at a piece of paper that has the actual value of X on it. So we're pointing at the value. We're passing that reference by just pointing. Um, so Y dot append, it means that the guy who's Y is gonna point at X and say, you need to add this to the end of that paper. And he's gonna write six at the end. And if we print X, Y is gonna go uh, and be ignored by this because we're talking to X who's pointing at the piece of paper and X is gonna say, I have one, two, three, six. And we can see that down here below. Last, what causes the previous task to output that? I mentioned it once, that is passed by reference. And again, that is because we have Y pointing at X and X is pointing at the actual value. If we were passing the value around, which some programming languages do, that can result in a lot of garbage sitting around in our program and it takes up more memory that way. So just something to be aware of. All right, so that is gonna do it for day 15. As always, if you have any questions, I will have a link to the Try Hack Me Discord in the description below. Definitely recommend joining that. We have a dedicated advent of cyber chat as well in there. Tomorrow's video is going to be done by John Hammond. So I'm gonna have his channel linked in the video description below. And I will see you guys in a few days.